All right, folks, welcome back. Back on the old uh, R9 train here. <clears throat> Big question I've been getting lately is how do I wire my R9M receiver, it's this little itty bitty guy here, to my Kakute F4. And the Kakute F4 is a very unique F4 flight controller because it does have provisions for telemetry. So it does have that bi-directional inverter for S port or smart port, however you want to, however you want to call it. So this is actually an extremely easy flight controller to wire up. Let me get you a closer picture of this flight controller. If you see here, you know, we've got, we've got ground, we got power, uh, you got TX and RX3, TX and RX6, and you got this one right here, that pad, Right there. Get you a better picture of it. This one right here. It's a smart port. So, it's really rare. Uh, I don't know of any other flight controller that has a built-in bi-directional inverter for smart port, but this one does. So, I'm gonna go over real quick how to install this. Uh, it should be pretty, pretty quick and easy, pretty painless. Uh, so as far as the, the receiver goes, I'm going to wire this up for uh, standard S bus and S port, because if you can get it to work for S bus and S port, then F port is extremely easy to do after that. Honestly, you don't have to take any wires off of anything if you don't need that, uh, that TX3 right here. But uh, I'll cover that in another video. So this is just standard S bus, smart port, telemetry uh, connections for the Kakute F4 flight controller. Um, so we're only gonna need four wires on our, on our receiver. We're gonna need uh, ground power, our S bus, or sorry, ground power, smart port, and S bus. And we're going to wire it up right now. And let's see, I'm gonna fire up my my soldering iron. We got a got a new soldering iron in the mail. This is the TS80. Uh, I do have the TS100, and I've also got a Hako 888D. Uh, I like this because it packs down a lot smaller in my travel kit. Uh, it doesn't have as much power as the TS100, but just very marginally. Uh, and it's powered off of USB-C. Super cool, but there are some very specific power requirements for power in this thing. So, we'll have, you know, you got to take that into consideration. But I'll have more on this later on uh, in a diff different video. All right, let's get it warmed up here. And uh, I've already got my pads tinned up here. I had to remove a, another piece of gear that I had installed in there. We'll just give them a quick touch. All right. So first off, I'll grab my old tweezers here. Let me reorient this so, so we can see what's going on. Hopefully I don't stick my hand in the camera all that much. It's, it's actually a lot harder to do than, than it seems. All right, so I'm going to start off with my ground wire here. And there's my ground connection. Nope, never mind. I missed. I'll tell you guys, this is this is actually really hard to do on camera. All right, without getting my big fat hands in there. And the ground pads are usually the hardest to solder to because there's it seems like there's a lot of thermal mass to them. Really got to heat up the ground pads to get the solder to stick. Turn to my iron a little bit. 
All right, here we go. And just for everybody at home, if you're curious what temperature I'm running my iron at, <clears throat> I'm running at about 700 degrees Fahrenheit. <clears throat> Sorry, about 750. I know that seems awfully high, but eh, it, it all comes down to user preference. I like to get in, get out fast. All right, now we'll wire up our five volts. And I'm being very specific about how I wire up my five volts because this is not powered off of USB because I wanna be able to flash firmware without disconnecting the whole mess. And you can't do that if it's powered off of USB by using, uh, I'm gonna use serial pass-through to do this. And these pads are not powered from the USB port. All right, power and grounder in, and I'm going to take my smart port telemetry wire. And I'll go ahead and solder that guy up. There we go. See, this is why I prefer a really hot iron, is I really want to just get in and out real fast. Still creates just the same quality solder job, but I'm not dumping so much heat into the board. And let's see, we're gonna go to RX3. So it's a receive on UART3. In and out. Boom. All right, give this all a little tug just to make sure they're in there. And they are. And as always, like I say every time I do a soldering video, a video where I'm soldering, put a bunch of solder on your tip and then shut the iron off. Don't clean it. Leave that blob of solder on there just like, just like so. And what that'll do is that'll help keep the uh, tip of your iron from oxidizing while it's sitting there in storage. Okay. So that's it for our connections. Real simple. I'm going to turn this guy around and we'll just go ahead and twist up these wires a little bit to make them all nice and neat, make it look like somebody knew what they were doing. Did this. I love silicone wire, it's so easy to work with. And I'll go up and go ahead and hook up my antenna. There we go. And a little piece of heat shrink. Or a really big piece of heat drink, whatever. Whatever you got laying around. I just don't want this to accidentally arc and spark on anything. So there we go. There's our connections. We're all connected up. Next, we'll, uh, we'll move over to Betaflight and I'll show you how to configure it in Betaflight. Okay, here we are at Betaflight Configurator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flash a fresh copy of Betaflight to the Kakute F4. That way we're all on the same page when we start off doing this. Okay, so I put my board in the DFU mode and I'm going to choose Kakute F4. There we go. And firmware uh, 3.5.0. Let's see what else is there. All right, 3.5.0. Full chip erase, and we're gonna load our firmware, and we're gonna flash it. <clears throat> okay, there we are. Uh, <clears throat> new Betaflight is flashed. Uh, and sorry, bear with me if I keep clearing my throat. I've been fighting a cold for the last couple of days. So uh, I'll try to keep that to a minimum, but hey, it's gonna happen. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect my flight controller from Betaflight, and I'm going to go ahead and bind my receiver with my Tyrannus. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do this. There's a million videos on how to bind. Uh, I think I even have a few. If I find one, I'll, I'll pin it up here somewhere. Uh, but anyways, so I'm <clears throat> going to go ahead and connect to Betaflight again. 
and connect and go to ports and for my setup I got a TBS smart audio device on UART 6 and UART 3 we selected serial RX so go ahead and hit save and at this point I still don't have a, a LiPo connected to my my flight controller just double check make sure that's saved go to configuration uh, D-Shot 600 So we'll do 16 and 8. Do that. Accelerometer. Don't need that. Make sure we're on serial based receiver. And make sure we are selected to S bus. Telemetry is enabled. And OSD, anti gravity, dynamic filter, and I always use air mode. And save. Make sure that all saved there. Let's see if we can do 1616. Hmm, okay. okay, I can live with 40%. All right, so our configuration is set up here. And let's go to our receiver tab and connect our LiPo. And as you can see, we do have RC commands coming in. I'll change this to T-A-E-R. Now oh, I have mine set up. There we go. Now it makes more sense. All right. <clears throat> so we have our RC commands. Those are all working. All our switches are, that I have mapped are working correctly. And we'll go into the Tyrannus and see if we have telemetry. And to find this, go to the telemetry page and discover sensors. And there we go. I have all my, my sensors. So that's it. That's all you have to do for the, uh, the Kakute F4. It's all pretty much ready to go out of the box. Uh, there's no command line, anything that you got to mess with. As long as you uh, are flashing 3.5.0, I don't know if any other firmware versions have uh, different configurations for it, but in this case, she's ready to rock. No need to mess around with anything. All right, folks, that's it. It's just that simple. The Kakute F4 has got to be one of the easiest flight controllers I've ever had to wire up. Uh, and it flies great too. The only downside is, you know, stack height with this this uh, soft mounted gyro on there. Anyways, if you guys uh, if you guys like what I'm doing, please uh, like, subscribe, comment. Uh, if you have any ideas for other videos, please put them in the uh, the comments below. I, I read all of them. I respond to all of them. Uh, if you guys want to see more about this little guy here, ooh, pretty cool, comes apart. Uh, let me know. I'll do a nice review on this guy too. Um, click the bell if you uh, want to be notified of all my uploads. I try to do about one a week. Um, I'm always looking for different ideas. I, I like teaching. I like trying to help out the community. I like trying to make this stuff simple and easy and just straightforward because this is this kind of stuff is usually the seems like a pretty big barrier to entry for everybody. All right. Anyways. Uh, Next time we'll do the exact same thing, except for we'll, I'll show you how to set it up for F-port, uh, both flashing F-port and also the connection and the Betaflight setup. All right, thanks a lot. We'll catch you next time.